Yo, what's good people? It's Jay Cactus, and today I'm going to be showing you why the all new Ozone 12 by Isotope is the go to tool for mastering and how you can use it to improve your beat mixes too. There's new tools and features available, new algorithms, and the best part is you don't have to be an expert to get amazing results. So let me show you what it can do. All right, so if you're new to Ozone, it's an all in one suite designed to be a mastering tool that saves you so much time. It's been around for over 20 years and it's a staple in most studios. It's been a part of my process ever since I started making music, especially when I'm releasing official instrumentals or songs with artists. It uses AI to listen to your track and give you industry standard recommendations that you can tweak. You can see it covers every part of a mastering chain like EQ, compression, imaging, limiting, and so much more. And by the way, Ozone 12 standard is now available in FL Cloud Pro and you can get your first year for only $99. So we'll leave a link in the description. So to show you how it works, I have this beat that I've made and exported and I only had soft clipper on the master which is common for a lot of producers. It had basic mixing like leveling and EQ but if I want to release this properly and get it on streaming platforms I'd need to do some type of mastering and Ozone 12 just makes it really simple to do yourself. So I brought the beat down to minus six just to give it some room. I've got Ozone 12 on the master and you can see that you can start with presets, add in the tools you need or you can use the assistant view. For a long time it was just one click and it would listen to your track and then make adjustments. But now you can go into custom mode. And from here I'm just going to set the genre. I've made a hood trap beat so I'm going to go to trap. Loudness target is minus 9 LUFS. That's going to be perfect for this one. And I'm going to leave everything the way it is just so you can see what it does. But now you can set the analysis time. The default is 8 seconds. But if you want it to listen to different parts of your track, for example the hook going into the verse, then you can increase the time. So let's start assistant and I'm going to play the hook section. Instantly you can tell that it's made it a lot louder and that's because I brought it down minus six. So to get a more accurate comparison, I'm just gonna go to gain match and have a quick listen. So this is off. And we'll turn it on. So instantly to me, it feels like it's just bringing it to life. It sounds a bit louder, a bit wider, and a little bit brighter too. So if we start at the beginning of the chain, we can see it's just taming the low end by minus 0.3, which is fine, and it's boosting the highs by 0.6. So these are just subtle adjustments, which is why I thought it sounded brighter. I like to go through each one and bypass them one by one just to see what they're actually doing. We'll turn it on now. Really subtle but it's just bringing out that high end a tiny bit more. If we go to the imager, like I said, it felt like it was wider and I like that this isn't doing too much. Nothing to the low end, just subtle adjustments to the low mids and high mids, but it's spreading the highs a bit more. So if we turn that off, or on. You might need headphones to hear that, but you'll just hear it open up a lot more, especially in the high end. I might just widen the high mids a bit too. Just that little bit more. With the stabilizer, you can think of this as an EQ that continuously fixes your mix over time. So it can smooth out harsh frequencies, reduce muddiness, and it will just help balance the overall tone. So again, really subtle. I can see it's just boosting up the highs slightly over time and it's just taming some of those lows slightly too. The dynamic EQ, this is a little bit more surgical than the stabilizer. It's only going to kick in when these frequencies get a bit too loud. And it looks like it's chosen some frequencies that might get a bit too harsh. So again, only subtle changes, but it's going to help clean things up. So I'm fine with that. Then next up we have the maximizer which will be the limiter. This is going to give you that commercial loudness without taking away the punch. The output set at minus 0.1 so no part of your beat is going to go past that and clip which is what you want for when you're releasing it. Then these are the different algorithms. IRC5 is the new one but it's recommending IRC2 right now but we can test them both. Let's try five. I'm actually getting a lot more loudness out of IRC5 so this could be the one. If you look here that's how much reduction we're getting. Could go for a little bit more. I just don't want to do it too much to the point where it squashes the sound. Let's try the new tool, Bass Control as well. 
Let's add this before the maximizer. So this will help clean up the low end of your track without it affecting everything else because it's going to separate the kick and the bass from the rest of it. I'm just going to increase the punch a little bit. And I might bring the low end down. It's about like half a dB. There we go. And for this one, that's all I'd really need before I officially release the beat. So let's have a listen to before and after. I'll keep game match on. Now on. So subtle changes, which is what I wanted, sounding a little bit louder, a bit wider and brighter. From here, we could turn game match off and then we can export it. Okay, so that's how I'd use it to master a beat, but you can also use Ozone 12 to help with the mixing process. I've just cooked up this beat using sounds from FL Cloud. So I'm liking the beat so far, but I want to show you how you can use Ozone to take it to another level. Let's start with the melody. And I've only got one layer here because it's loop from FL Cloud, but you could do this on a melody bus too. Right now, I've just got an EQ to take out some low end. Save room for the 808. But I'm going to pull up Ozone 12 and I'm going to pull up the dynamic EQ because I'm hearing a few harsh frequencies and I want to see if this can fix it. And I'm hearing something around this 500 range. So let's just have a listen. Yeah, see about there. I'm going to bring this down. And then bring the gain down. Just by about three. Bring the threshold back up. It's just going to help clean up that muddy area. That's off. On. I'm going to do the same with this sharp one here. Could also pull up the stabilizer. I don't want it to affect the low end because I'm removing that anyway. Now we could just start to increase this. There we go. This is before. After. These are really subtle changes, but it's going to help clean up your melody. Let's hear it with the drums. This is off. moves a bit of that muddiness. All right, now let's add it to the eight weight. Already a clean sound, but I'm gonna pull up Exciter. Exciter's gonna give it some saturation and it'll help it cut through on smaller speakers like phones. You can also choose the band. So let's say we don't wanna affect the low end. Just do everything over like 250. Choose the saturation mode, try warm, and then just increase the amount. Let's try something more interesting. Let's go for retro. Yeah, with that one, you can hear a huge difference. I'll bring it all the way up compared to I actually really like the sound of that so I'm going to keep that one see if it was covering everything that might be doing too much but that feels like a sweet spot so this is before now after Huge difference. Okay, lastly, I've got all of my drums linked to a drum bus. Pull up Ozone 12 again. And on this one, I'm going to add the imager. All I want to do here is widen the high end a bit. Just create a band here at like 3K. I'm going to turn this on, bring up that band. Just see where it sounds good. So now this is just widening the snare, the hats, and the high end of the drums. This is before. You can hear everything's down the middle, which is fine sometimes. But as a creative choice, Turn in the sun. So now it's just going to widen the hats, snare a bit, just the top end of the drums. Let's hear it with everything else though. Might even bring this band down just to get more of the snare. Yes, I'm liking the sound of that. So here I've automated all of the ozones we added so you can hear the before and after. So 
mainly hear a difference with the 808, the high end of the drums and the mid range of the melody, just cleaning things up. And that's just a few ways you can use Ozone 12 to creatively mix your beats. And if you want to try it for yourself, we'll leave a link in the description. I appreciate you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.